If you're wondering what the UA Box Series mics are going to sound like, I think I have an answer for you. Check it out. You're listening to the dangerous mind of Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov. No excuses, no BS, no pants. Some interesting revelations from Drew at Universal Audio. He says that these are new designs from David, hand-built in Santa Cruz. But it turns out that they are new designs, but every effort was made to keep them the same sonically. Some components were changed for environmental reasons, but none of them were critical audio path components. Same capsules and transformers. So, essentially, these mics sound the same as their Bach audio predecessors. And that the changes in the DC part of the circuit were made in order to uh, ensure that these microphones can be sold in all territories around the world. Because... Other countries have stricter environmental standards for electronics than the U.S. of A. So now that we know this, we can go to Audio Test Kitchen and shoot out the original pre-UA Bach 251 against its competition. So what I have lined up here is the Bach 251, the Telefunken, the $9,500 Telefunken, the $3,000 ADK, the cheap Telefunken, the $2,000 Telefunken, and the $800 warm audio. So let's just listen to this little clip here, the female vocal clip that I found here on Audio Test Kitchen. And uh, let's see what the difference is. One break, two hearts, three days forever you'll be gone. One break, two hearts, three days forever you'll be gone. One, one break. Two hearts, three days forever you'll be gone. One break, two hearts, three days forever you'll be gone. One break, two hearts, three days forever you'll be gone. One break, two hearts, three days forever you'll be gone. One break, two hearts, three days forever you'll be gone. All right. Uh, so I think there's a pretty big difference going on. I think that if you listen to the warm. One break, two hearts. Especially just the one break, two hearts. And then you listen to Telefunken. One break, two hearts, three days. I, I think they sound pretty similar. And if you look at the frequency response curves on them, they're pretty similar, all right? Then you throw the ADK in here. One break, two hearts. One break, two hearts. One break, two... All right, still, I think you're in the same vein. You could swap out any of these three mics. But the difference comes when you leave these three mics and you go to the Bach and the Telefunken. One break... Two hearts, three days forever you'll be gone. One break, two hearts, three days forever you'll be gone. So I think there's definitely a, uh, a difference. I think the Telefunken definitely sounds better. Does it sound $10,000 worth of microphone? Does it sound four grand better? Now, I don't know. All right, so six grand's a lot of money for a microphone. One break, two hearts, three days forever you'll be gone. One break, two hearts, three days forever you'll be gone. One break, two hearts, three days forever you'll be gone. All right, so uh, what do you think? I want to know what you think about this. All right, so that's the Bach 251. And we know now that the UA Box Series 251 is supposed to sound exactly like this. So let's try the Sound Deluxe U195, the Bach 195. Okay, so what I have here is the Sound Deluxe U195 in both the normal and fat. And the difference between the normal and the fat is that the fat just boosts this low end all the way up here. You get this giant 5 dB boost up here. So, uh, you know, it's the same thing, but with a big boost. And then you have the 017 FET, 
You have the 87 AI, which is not a vintage 87 sound. The U195 is David Box, uh, his version of a vintage 87. So this is going to sound a little bit more uh, modern, high end, but it's in the same family. And this microphone that nobody has heard of is actually a fairly well regarded U87, vintage U87 clone. So this mic, the Hammer Audio, and the Soyuz Owen 7 FET are probably closer to each other. And where the U195 fits in, well, let's find out. All right, so here, let's start with the U195 on normal. This is supposed to be exactly what the Bach Audio, the UA Bach Series uh, 187 is supposed to sound like. One break, two hearts, three days forever you'll be gone. One break, two hearts, three days forever you'll be gone. One break, two hearts, three days forever you'll be gone. One break, two hearts, three days forever you'll be gone. One break, two hearts, three days forever you'll be gone. Pretty similar. Pretty similar, but you know what? This may not have been the correct, uh, here, let's find, let me find a male vocal here. All right, this is kind of a, uh, let's see. This is a little bit of a dirgy male vocal, but let's try it. I got things I need to get off my chest. Not get held up at claims and business i got things i need to get off my chest not get held up at claims and business i got things i need to hold on that started late oh, let me go back okay hold on. i got things i need to get off my chest not get held up at claims and business i got things i need to get off my chest not get held up at claims and business i got things i need to get off my chest not get held up at claims and business i got things i need to get off my chest not get held up at claims and business i got things i need to get off my chest not get held up at claims and business i got things i need to get off my chest not get held up at claims and business I got things I need to get off my chest. Not get held up at claims and business. I got things I need to get off my chest. Not get held up at claims and business. All right, so I think they all sound very similar. I think they sound similar to the point that you could probably punch one in for the other. And if it was a track that was, uh, you know, underneath a vocal track that was underneath, a, you know, a, de a decently uh, dense mix or even a minimal mix, I think you could punch any of these in for each other. Uh, for the most part, really, the 87 sound is not as um, it's not as difficult to achieve as the 251 sound. So, uh, yeah, I think that the uh, Bach 187, if it does indeed sound like the U195, will make a lot of people happy. 
So, um, and as you can see, the price points here, the price point of the Sound Deluxe U195 is the same exact price point as the Bach 187. And here we are, I think, you know, fairly competing against the Soyuz. Uh, the Neumann is a different animal altogether. That is three times as much. And the Hammer Audio is a boutique mic that is probably, I don't even know if you can still find it. So, but it's a good, it's a very good representation of the uh, U87 clone, of a really good U87 clone. So, uh, there you go. Uh, I think now we have a pretty decent idea what these uh, Bach series mics are going to sound like. And unfortunately, they do not have the U99 on Audio Test Kitchen, so we can't really shoot that out against other 67 uh, mics. So, you know... We'll have to just go with the empirical evidence we have here. And um, time will tell. But if they do indeed sound like their pre-UA Bach uh, counterparts, then yeah, they're going to be great mics. And you know what? A lot of people are going to open their wallets and pick one up and be pretty excited about it. So I want to know what you think. So yeah, the Bach series microphones from Universal Audio are supposed to sound exactly like the pre-UA Bach microphones. They're just built with uh, more environmentally friendly components so that they can be sold around the world. So yeah, win-win for everyone. All right, leave a comment. Until next time, this is Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov, Fading to Black.